king's kid. Yes, I'm the king's kid. My father is the king over everything. So I will sing this song because I know that I belong to the king of the universe. I'm the king's kid. Yes, I'm the king's kid. My father is the Ah, g'day there, King's Kids. I am really glad you are here today so we can explore more amazing stories from the Bible together. Uh, today we will be looking into 1 Samuel chapters 29 and 30 and learning more about King David. Our topic today is victory. Anyway, let's get on with it. Professor I. R. Weiss, and today I'm going to show you something amazing. Have you ever wondered, boys and girls, how rain can come out of clouds? My assistant Hans and I will be demonstrating this in our experiment today. This might be an experiment you could try at home with the help of a grown-up. Anyway, let's get on with it. Hans, are you ready to make it rain? What are you doing with that spray bottle, Hans? You're making everything wet. That's not what I meant when I said let's make it rain. We're going to do an experiment which demonstrates how rain comes out of clouds. Now please put the water bottle away. You may need to wipe off the bench now so that we are ready to do our experiment. Thank you, Hans. Now, Hans, we need a cup of water that is just over half full. Yes, yes. Very good. Thank you, Hans. Now we need a can of shaving cream. Hans, what is that you have there? Is that a van of shaving cream? No, no, no. I just said a can of shaving cream, not a whole van of shaving cream. Put that away and just bring back the can of shaving cream. Yes, that's right. Very good, Hans. Now we need some blue food dye. Oh, Hans, what do you have there? Is that a blueberry pie? It looks absolutely delicious. Don't put that away. I would really like a piece of that when we finish the experiment. Just put it to the side for later. That is making me feel hungry. But what I really need, Hans, is blue food dye. What's that, Hans? We're out of blue food dye. I wonder if Arnie has any we could borrow so we can do our experiment. Could you please go and check with Arnie? 
Hello boys and girls, it's Granny Grace here again with another story from God's special book. During the time of David, there were lots of battles as people fought to keep their homes and cities safe. One day, David and his men marched from the town of Ziklag to help King Achish fight a battle. But while they were away, enemy soldiers came and burnt down their own town. They took all the women, all the children and all the animals away with them. David's soldiers were angry. It's your fault, they said to David. We should have stayed here to protect our families and animals. David was upset too, but before he did anything, he asked God for help. David didn't pray like we did. He asked the high priest to bring the ephod. The ephod was a special kind of apron that the high priest wore. On it were two beautiful gemstones. When the priest asked a question, one of the stones would glow brightly. One stone glowed for yes, the other stone glowed for no. When the priest asked if David should chase the enemy soldiers who captured their families, the yes stone began to glow. This is how God answered David. David gathered his army and they chased after the Amalekites. Some soldiers were so tired they couldn't keep going and stopped at a big hill. David now had an even smaller army. Finally, they saw the Amalekite camp. As the sun set, they attacked the camp. All night, the battle raged. In the morning, the enemy soldiers fled, leaving everyone and everything they had captured behind. We won, shouted David's men. Oh no. God won the battle for us, replied David. We deserve all the animals, tents and other treasures, said David's men. Oh no, God protected us and gave us the victory. We will share with everyone, said David. Boys and girls, that is what God's grace is about. He wins the battle, but he shares the victory with us. We are all winners with God. Today's Bible verse comes from Psalms 23, verse 6. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Hi, my name is Rosie. Did you know that in the ancient Great Olympics, Olympians were given a special kind of leaves to show that they were winners? I might not win everything at the Olympics, but when God wins, I'm a winner. So today I'm going to show you how to make some fun nature crowns. The things that you will need are something to put your headband for, some leaves or some flowers or some grass, and you will need some glue. I'm going to use a hot glue gun. First, measure your head. Cut the band to fit. You might need some help to do this and remember to leave enough to overlap it. And now put a zigzag of glue. And now join it up and test the fit. Yep, perfect. Start attaching your nature to the crown. Always think safety first. Now you put the glue where you are going to put your nature. And now put your nature onto the glue. I've chosen some fern. You can put as much nature as you want.
I'm using jacarandas. You can use whatever you want. Now I can wear my nature crown knowing that I am a winner because I walk with God. Why don't you make a nature crown to remind yourself that you are a winner when God wins? Ah, good day there boys and girls and welcome along to Balloon Kaboom. And again I've got my friend here with me, Pastor Darren. Good day there Pastor Darren. Hi Arnie, hi boys and girls, so good to be back again. Now um. What are we going to be making with the balloons today, Pastor Darren? Well, today I have some golden balloons. See if you can guess what I'm making. Mm. I'm going to inflate this balloon right up. It's not going to be a calf, is it? A golden calf? Yeah. No, not mm. a golden calf. Not a golden calf, okay. You've read that story, Arnie. Many times now. Nothing to do with a golden calf. Okay. I'm going to tie it off. Are you trying to guess, boys and girls? Into a circle. Oh, into a circle, a golden circle. Oh, I like golden uh, circles. <laughs> Turn it into sausages. Golden sausages now. Fold it. I'm going to squash it. Oh, and squash it, golden squash. And twist it. Oh, golden twist. And there it is, boys and girls, another work in progress. Take some round balloons. Some round balloons. And join them in at the top. Right. Lots of gold here, Pastor Darren. That's it. That's a big clue, actually, Arnie. Yeah. Big clue. I'm going to blow up another gold balloon. Another gold balloon. And I'm going to mm. start at one side, at the bottom. Right, yeah. Join it in. And join it in. OK. And then I'm going to come right up to the top. Yeah. Okay, this is looking very interesting, Pastor Darren. Yes. And join it back in. And there it is. And there it is. It's still a work in progress. Have you guessed what it might be yet? Apart from being gold. <laughs> That's right. Lots of gold going in here, Arnie. Mm. Love it. It was real gold. And around the other side. Join it in. Okay. Making a some sort of cage, maybe. Join it in at the bottom. Right. And there it is. Uh, is it finished this time, Pastor Darren? No, we're almost there though. Oh, almost there, okay. Going to take these three balloons. What do you reckon it might be, boys and girls? Can you hold it for me, Arnie? Oh, I, yeah, I can't, hang on. Yep, I got it. Good as gold, uh, Pastor Darren. Good as gold, yes. Yeah. I'm going to plait these three together. I'm plaiting it all the way down to the bottom. And then pinch it. Yep, pinch it. Get rid of this bit. Okay. Right out. Now I need to make the bottom. A bottom plate. That's a big clue, aren't it? Oh, bottom plate. Okay. That's it. Mm. And there. And there. Fold it. And squash it. Squash it, yep. Twist it and put the bottom plate on. Okay. Righto. Now let's get the top back, Arnie. Okay, there you go. And put the top on. And the top on. Right. And there it is. Mm. Can you guess what it is, Arnie? Uh, I hope you know, boys and girls, because I'm struggling here a little bit. Maybe an alien. <laughs> it looks a bit alien, but it's not an alien. So it's not a golden alien. Think okay. Winning. Oh, okay. I, I know what it is now. I've uh, won a few of these before in the past. You have, Arnie? Yes. Uh, it, it's called a trophy. That's right. It's called a trophy. That we're learning about the story of David today again. Right. David always wins in the end 
with God. He always gets the victory. Yep. Remember that with God, you're always winning. You always get the victory because God has done it for us. Oh, that, that is so fantastic, Pastor Darren. Oh, I've always had God in, in my life and uh, I let him fight my battles. I think I do too. You want to take this home? Um, well, um, yeah. Anyway, uh, boys and girls, it's time to go now. So from balloon kaboom, uh, we'll catch you next time. See you, Pastor Darren. Bye, Arnie. Bye, boys and girls. Okay, let's let's uh, attempt to get this <laughs> this trophy into Without my popping it. chat. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Nurse Betty. One of the things I love to do is to teach boys and girls how to stay healthy. Today, I'd like to talk with you about your nose. Your nose has two holes called nostrils. When you inhale or breathe in through your nostrils, the air enters the nasal passages and travels into your nasal cavity. It then passes down the back of your throat into the trachea or windpipe on its way to the lungs. The inside of your nose is lined with a moist, thin layer of tissue called a mucous membrane. The mucous membrane makes mucus, that sticky stuff in your nose you might call snot. The mucus captures dust, germs and other small particles that could irritate your lungs. If you look inside your nose, you will also see hairs that can trap large particles like dirt or pollen. If something does get trapped in there, do you know what happens next? You sneeze. When you sneeze, it can send those unwelcome particles speeding out of your nose at over 100 kilometres per hour. If you have a cold or the flu, your nose goes into mucus-making overdrive to keep the germ invaders out of your lungs and the rest of your body, where they might make you even sicker than you already are. Mucus runs down your throat, out your nose or into a tissue when you blow your nose. Or it can fill your sinuses, which is why you get that stuffy feeling. Besides protecting you, the nose helps you to smell things. So identifying smells is your brain's way of telling you about your environment. Your sense of smell can keep you safe. You can smell smoke if there is a fire, smell food that is rotten so you don't eat it, or even smell if your toast is burning. Your nose also works with your taste buds to help you taste the flavour of foods. Try pinching your nose when you eat something and you will notice the difference in the taste of your food. There are so many amazing features that God has placed in the design of our noses. King's kids, remember that Jesus loves you Take care of your body and take care of each other. Oh, good day there, Hans. How are you going again? Oh, what is it you'd like this time? Uh, you want some some architrave? Oh, um, uh, some wood? No. Oh, hang on, you got some paper, right? Uh, it's blue paper. Yeah. And you're writing something, okay? Hmm. Wonder what he's writing. Okay, you've written dye. Yeah? And uh, blue dye. Oh, you want some blue dye? Yeah, oh, I've got some of that. Um, I'll get uh, I'll get Shane to drop it off to you, okay? Yeah, fantastic. Hans, did you manage to get the blue food dye? Yes, very good. Thank you, Hans. Now we can finally get on with the experiment. First, Hans, can you please add the shaving cream to the cup of water? No, 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 Hans. I should have explained it more clearly. Please squirt the shaving cream from the can into the cup of water. Yes, that's right, Hans. Very good. Now add some drops of food dye to the top of the shaving cream. Now watch what happens, boys and girls.
Can you see the food dye moving slowly through the shaving cream? Keep watching! Watch what happens as it reaches the water! The food dye is beginning to stream out into the water! Just like rain coming out of the clouds! Food coloring is denser than the shaving cream and the water! As such, the food coloring drops to the bottom of the cup, acting like rain! Rain is a form of precipitation, where water vapor in a cloud condenses to form large enough drops that they fall out of the sky. It all has to do with relative humidity, which means how much water there is in the air compared to the temperature. Warmer air can hold more water vapor than colder air. If the temperature of the air falls past the temperature needed for the water to condense, the water in the air will form liquid droplets, which will fall as rain. We call the temperature that the water vapor condenses at the dew point. Next time you see rain in the clouds, think of this experiment and thank God for the rain to water the earth. Now for that blueberry pie. Hans, what are you doing? No, 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 Hans, don't put shaving cream on my pie. Now that we have read the passages twice, Andy, um, let's put it in our own words. But first, let's pray. Dear God, please guide us. Thank you. Hey, Andy, uh, do you want to start? Oh, I would love to, Shane. The first passage comes from 1 Samuel chapter 29. Achish sends David back to Ziglag. The Philistines gathered at Apec and Israel camped by the spring in Jezreel. The Philistine commanders were angry with Achish the Philistine king. They said, send David back. He must not fight with us. He will turn against us in battle. Isn't this the David they sang about? Saul has slain his thousands and David his ten thousands. So Achish called David and said, I would be pleased to serve with you. But the Philistine rulers don't agree with this. So please turn around and go back in peace. David asked, why can't I fight? Hakish answered, I know you have not done wrong to me, but the Philistine leaders have said you must not come. So David and his men left and went back to Jezreel. Uh, my passage was from 1 Samuel 30, 1 to 25. When David got back home with his men, they, they found that the Amalekites had raided their cities and taken everything, women, children, the lot, and then burnt the buildings. Uh, so David and his men chased the Amalekites' army and got everything back and even more. Uh, some of his men didn't go to battle with him because they were too tired. But David distributed his battle rewards amongst all of his men evenly because it was the fair thing to do. Hey Andy, how about we do the Discovery Bible questions? What's new? Oh, that David is now fighting with the Philistines. In our last study, he was fighting against them. What's going on? Well, you can go back and read the rest of the story, Andy. But at that time, King Saul was trying to kill David and it was actually safer for him to live with his enemies. Oh, OK then. So it's good to know the whole story. What surprises you? Well, Andy, I'm surprised that David shared his rewards with all of his men, even those who didn't even fight with him. Not many would do that these days. Oh, yeah, Shane. It shows he was a generous man that looked out for everyone. So what don't you understand, Andy? Well, I don't understand why they had so many battles and wars. Mm, yeah, there is a big battle going on between good and evil, Andy. When we choose to be on God's side, we're on the winning team. And we will have the victory. Oh, yes. That's something to think about, Shane. What will you obey or apply? To choose to be on God's winning side. With God, we have the ultimate victory.
What are you going to uh, share with somebody this week, Andy? I'm going to tell people I am going to choose God's side. Because when God wins, we win. Let's pray to finish, Shane. Yeah, okay, let's do it. Dear God, thank you for your word. Help us to follow you. Amen. Amen. See you next time, Shane. Yeah, see you, Andy. Oh, I'm logging out again. <laughs> given me. A V is for victory. There's victory in Christ. Uh, isn't that great news? Uh, when we choose to be on God's side, uh, we are on the winning side. Uh, because when God wins the battle, uh, we are all winners. And God shares the victory with us. Uh, isn't it wonderful to have such a loving God? Uh, anyway, Kings kids, uh, it's time to go now. I will look forward to catching up with you all again next time. Uh, so take care, uh, stay safe, and God bless. So I will sing the song because I know that I belong to the King of the universe. He gives me peace that passeth all understanding, a joy that overflows. Isn't it just totally amazing? The love that my Father shows. I'm a King's kid. Yes, I'm a King's kid. My Father. Yes, I'm a king's kid. My father.